All right, it's time for your email questions and some honest answers. And we're going to start with this one from Donna. She says, I believe when we die, we immediately go to heaven. What does the Bible mean when it says when Christ returns, the dead in Christ will rise? Gordon, this one is always kind of... This is one of your questions. Yeah, it bothered it? me a little it's bit, too. It's not just Donna, it's also Wendy. That's right. Yeah, okay. I want to know. I, I always thought, you know, we <laughs> immediately went. Uh, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. Jesus says, as you <laughs> quoted in the break, that uh, this day you will be with me in paradise. And he's saying that to the thief on the cross Amen. because he acknowledged that he was the Messiah. So this day you will be with me in paradise. Great. That's so, good. So, yeah. what, so what does so it mean? So you die, you're with Jesus. When the dead, what does it mean when the dead in Christ shall rise? I believe in the resurrection of the dead, and that means a bodily resurrection. And one of the oldest books in the Bible, the book of Job, he says, there will be a day where I will stand on the earth and I will see <laughs> my Redeemer face to face. Awesome. Okay. So it's, there's, to be absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. But in that state, you're looking forward to the bodily resurrection back here on earth and then the millennial reign. So this is a win win. Yay. This is a, this is Both great are news. Right. <laughs> Both are right. Both are it right. It doesn't get any better. It's good news. Awesome. Thank you, Gordon. That always stumped <laughs> me. All right. D, um, this is from D. She says, I attend a church where the congregation claps after a person prays. They also clap at the end of, of a praise or worship song. Is this scriptural? Uh, D, the scripture says that, you know, the trees of the field will clap their hands. And, and what are they clapping for? Uh, well, they're clapping about the great things that God has done. Uh, so if people want to clap, I think it's very old behavior. You, um, you, it, it's tough to find scriptural references uh, for a lot of things. Uh, a lot of the liturgy, a lot of the uh, traditions, a lot of the customs of the church. Uh, but at the same time, uh, clapping just seems to be a normal human response that goes way back. Uh, so if people are excited about something, uh, uh, why not let them clap? Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. I know. Can you, you imagine? You got a problem with clapping? Can you imagine you're preaching in, and everybody's completely silent? They're, they don't, you know, they oh, never. That's how, that happens all the time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know, sometimes I hear snoring, and it's okay. Yeah, I know. I'm, all, I'm a clapper and, and a shouter and an amener, so praise the Lord. All right, this viewer says, and Gordon's a great preacher. Don't let him fool you. All right, this viewer says, I would like to know what Jesus meant in Mark 16, 17 through 18 when he said, in my name they shall take up serpents. I have heard this quoted in the pulpit many times, but have never heard it explained. Oh, <laughs> I actually have never heard it from the pulpit. I, I think most people skip over it. Um, you, you, look, you look at this, and, and boy, has some bad doctrine come up where you, know, you actually have churches that believe in snake handling as some kind of proof of their holiness or their belief. Uh, and all they're doing is really tempting God and uh, certainly tempting the snake to, <laughs> to, to bite them. Um, you know, it, it's, there's a parallel, and you find it in Luke chapter 10, where you will tread on serpents and scorpions. And, and Jesus isn't saying to his disciples, you know, please find a bunch of serpents that you can walk on. Uh, what he's saying is that you have control, you have dominion over the demonic. And, and you know, that, that is a, a wonderful thing. And we need to not be afraid of the devil. He is a defeated foe. There's another side to it, and it's a perfectly good interpretation because the verse goes on that uh, you know you can you, you're not going to you're not going to die if you happen to drink poison, uh, and so you look at scripture and the apostle Paul stuck his hand into a, a bunch of sticks to put him in the fire, and a viper bit him, uh, and it had no effect on him. Uh, so I don't tempt God with it, but understand. He's with you, and if you're doing His work, He's going to protect you from all harm. And in Luke 10, that's exactly what Jesus says, and nothing will by any means harm you.